All right, folks. So um, today we're learning about something new. Um, and what that thing is, is that um, we're learning about screw types. So if you look at the assignment today, I was looking for something that's not too hard, but something I thought would educate everybody. And I wanted you guys to learn something new. That's always a cool thing to do. In fact, I know that's going to happen, or I'm, I'm almost 100% sure, because as I was doing this assignment and getting it prepared for you guys, I was learning things. And I actually was looking things up because I'm like, what's the difference between this and this? I didn't know there was a difference. So I started looking stuff up, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to learn something new. Um, so um, it just says to fill this out, so um, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a minute. So let's get to the website right here, this website called 36 Types of Screws or whatever, and it's right here. And let me zoom in just a bit for you guys. And first off, I just want you to learn about some screws. So they have wood screws right here. And you can look at, and, and uh, mainly a wood screw, we know it's a wood screw by the, um, one second here. Uh, we know it's a wood screw by the type of threading right here. It's usually very coarse, uh, so it can just kind of pull its way through, uh, like, um, through wood. Now they do look very, very similar usually to sheet metal screws, I'll be honest with you. These are usually a little bit wider though, uh, apart, but um, I've seen people use sheet metal screws in wood and wood in sheet metal screws, but they are different. So they have wood screws and they have sheet metal screws. Sheet metal screws are for sheets of metal. They're flat, thin metals, like a little sheet of metal. You drill a tiny hole in it and then you stick this in there and it screws right in. And there's plenty of times in life when you need these. And of course, wood screws as well. Machine screws, these ones right here, these ones right here, these machine screws, um, and these ones are thread cutting ones, um, don't even worry about that. Machine screws are the kind that you, there's a hole, there's already threads in the hole, and you just kind of lay the screw in and you can twist them by hand and you can feel, like as soon as you go in two or three, turns you can't pull it out there's no way now a wood screw if you put it in just a couple of twists you can pull out and you'll rip some of the wood out right you'll shred it uh, strip it out um, and even a sheet metal screw can bend its way back out of a little sheet metal thin hole if you just barely put a couple of turns and you try to pull it and yank it out you could probably do that a machine screw really you can't do that without some huge amount of force um, and you know when a, a, a hole's been machined uh, correctly, uh, you just put the screw in and it should go in very, very smoothly, uh, unless there's some sort of materials on it that make it harder. Um, now, um, if you look at screws, here's some more. Self-drilling. So these are self-drilling. So let's say these are wood screws, which they are, and they have little drill bits at the end. You can see how they're like cut. They're not super sharp. But if I stick this in a, in a drill and I shove it in the wood, it'll actually start to drill the hole for me and then s screw in, which is kind of cool. And they are useful when you're just going real quick and, you know, um, you just want to screw it in and you don't want to drill first. It's, it's kind of uh, nicer. They're a little bit more expensive, though. Uh, these are hex bolts. What's the difference between this? Well, these are machine bolts, but these are hex bolts. I guess they just call them hex bolts because they have a hexagon head on them. Here's a carriage bolt. A carriage bolt is not made to have a screwdriver or anything on this side. Now usually, if you look right here, there is a little hex bolt there. That'll fall into the metal part and it won't be able to twist because it kind of falls into it and it, in, on the outside of the part or the machine or whatever you're putting this on, you'll only see this nice little pretty flat head. Um, the other side is where you'll put the nut to, to screw onto this thing. Here's a lag bolt. Uh, these are the kind of things that come with your TV. Um, lag bolts are made to go in really tight. Okay, so you make the whole. You have to drill a hole first for them, for sure. Okay, these are usually really big bolts, and if you don't drill a hole first, and you try to just screw this in the wood first off, you won't be able to do it. In fact, you'll probably end up cracking the wood. Um, and then, so what you do is you drill a hole, and it should be smaller than this, though, just a little bit smaller. And you got to really twist these things in, and uh, it can hold hundreds of pounds, usually, um, as if the wood that you're screwing into is nice and solid. Uh, this is what you'd usually hang your TVs on. Uh, if you ever bought a TV, and you bought one of those TV hanging sets, they always come with a set of lag bolts like this. And you really got to crank those on with a wrench or something on this uh, head right here. Here's some socket screws. 
Uh, these are hex sockets, you can see right here on the end, and these are just socket screws. Here's a set screw, this is important. These are very tiny, okay? And right here in that little circle is where you fit usually one of those little Allen wrenches, inches, an Allen wrench, which is one of those L-shaped ones, and they're called Allen wrenches or hex keys. And, uh, and they're made to just tighten down against something to keep something from rotating or something like that or something from falling off. We actually have these in, the, in my class uh, on something called shaft collars in our robots and stuff, and I'll show them later. So don't forget this. This is called a set screw. They're very tiny. They come in different sizes, but they're usually very small, like uh, the size of a little tiny worm or something like that. They're very small. These are eye bolts. If you've ever seen one, you'll know what to call them, right? You'll say, hey, uh, I need one of those eye bolts. Well, you know, well, they have an eye on them, and usually they're for attaching some type of cable or rope or something like that to them. And then there's J bolts and U bolts, and look at they're pretty much the shape of the letter, right? J, U. Uh, a shoulder bolt. Um, I think it's just, I've never seen one of this or heard that name before. That's new to me. And an elevator bolt is new to me, too. I wouldn't have called it that. I would have just called that a carriage bolt, but just a weird looking one, but I guess it has its own name. Uh, sex bolts, they call them that because there's actually a female and a male one and they slide into each other and you'll never see the thread. So they're actually really clean looking right here. Uh, mating screws right here. Here's another one. And these are really weird ones. These are rarer and they're just made for like uh, specific stuff that you want to look pretty at the end. Uh, head styles. Now, these are head styles. Now pay attention to this. When I say head style, I'm not talking about, oh, this is uh, like this little plus sign in the middle. You see the little plus sign right here? We're not talking about that. We're talking about the what it looks like from the side right here. So here's a flat one right here. Do you guys see this? A flat, flat head. Here's a oval head. So when you, this will kind of hang out rounded outside the apart. Here's a pan head. So if somebody says, give me a pan head screw, this is what a pan head would look like. Here's a truss, which to me, I would have never, I didn't know that was called truss. I always thought that was just another pan head. Uh, here's a round, which is literally like almost a half circle. A hex, which is just a hex bolt right here, hex heads. Hex washer, that's a hex head with a little washer on the outside right here. And then here's a slotted hex washer, which pretty much, is, you know, it's the same thing. The only difference is there's a slot in the middle if you want to use a screwdriver instead of a hex head. And then um, socket cap, that's the socket. You stick it inside there and it's a socket. This is also a socket, but uh, this one's a, uh, a button. But to me, that looks very similar to like, you know, uh, this button looks very similar to a pan head. I guess the only difference is a pan head goes in a little bit right here and this one doesn't. But, you know, most people, I'll be honest, would just call this a pan head. Uh, but uh, this is really a type and it's called a button. Now, here's the part where um, we're focusing on today's class, on your assignment today. And this is the uh, drive types. So let's look at just a few of them. Here's a Fearson or a Phillips head. Oh, I've never heard anybody call them a Frearson. I've only call, heard people call this a Phillips head. Some people who don't know the name of this will call this the plus sign one. Give me the plus sign screwdriver, but this is not a plus sign, it's called a Phillips. This is a slotted, but most people call this a flat head. This one's a combination. It just means it can do flathead or a Phillips. Here's a socket or a hex Allen. A hex screw, a socket, or an Allen. That's, that's what they look like in real life. This is what it looks like from the front. Uh, a one-way. Check this out. This is part of the many different security heads. You guys probably seen these like in bathrooms and stuff like this where they want to tighten something, but they don't want somebody else to untighten them. So what happens is you're able to go one way, but if you try to go the other way with a screwdriver, it'll just slip out. Here's a square type, and here's a Torx. These are also known as star bits. Some people call these star bits or Torx. So here's a square bit. Look at how boring that is. I, I recently used those maybe about 10 years ago or something, and when I used one, I was like, what is this, man? Why did I, I accidentally bought a whole box of square bits? And then luckily it came with the square bit that goes in there. And once I used them, I was telling my buddy, I go, man, these are so good. Like they don't slip at all, man. These are really good. Like they, once you, once you put the bit in there, they never slip. And I'll be honest, this is my favorite one right here. This square bit. I, it just, I, I don't know why anything else exists, you know, 
Uh, I think square bits are the way to go because I've used them and they're just so solid feeling. Here's washer types if you want to learn about them, but uh, you don't have to. Um, but they're always good to know. Pretty much there's just flat washers. These are flat washers. I You don't need to know the names of all of these, okay? Um, except maybe the only ones you would really need to know the name of because you know, you want to be educated and you, you want to learn a little bit about something and, you know, somebody might ask you, hey, can you give me a, a, a flat washer? These are all, to me, these are all flat washers. This one, this one, this one, okay? The only other one that somebody might ask you for is a locking washer or a split lock. This one right here. They might say, can you give me a locking washer? It's a washer that looks like it's cut and bent a little bit. So, the only ones you really need to know out of all of these that you'll ever run into in most of your life is a flat washer like this one, this one, and this one, and a locking washer like this one. Now, out of all these, there's all these specific names, like if you're a professional, okay? I'm going to show you the ones that you really need to know because they come up in your life a lot, okay? First off, a hex one. Okay, those are uh, which also known as machine nuts or whatever. This is like a common nut to me. Like if they said, you know, give me a nut for my bolt, this is this is what you're thinking of right here. Now, if they say you need a nylon insert lock, I have these part of my robots too. I have these ones and I have these ones. This nylon insert lock has a little bit of nylon white plastic. If you look inside, there'll be some white plastic on it. These are like gray colored, so you can't tell. But there'll be some white plastic in there. And when you try to tighten this on, it's kind of hard, man. You, gotta re you can't do it by hand. You'll be able to do it by hand at first, and then you'll need a tool to really tighten it. And what it does is it just makes sure that it doesn't come off. So they're really cool if you really want something to be permanent and solid and not fall off ever again. A nylon one is really good. You guys all know wing nuts right here. These are wing nuts. If somebody asks you for a wing nut, you're looking for one of these. And you can tell the specific reason for these is that you can tighten them by hand. And that's the main reason a wing nut, why you would want a wing nut. Why would you put a wing nut on something? Why would you want to tighten something by hand? It's usually, it's because it's, you're putting it somewhere where you're planning on putting it together, then taking it apart over and over again. So like things that you like build somewhere and then you got to take them apart and take them, and take them back home and then build them again. You would want wing nuts on them so that you could just, Tighten them by hand, and then untighten them by hand, and be and take them on and off. A cap. Uh, this this is a cap. It's a washer with a cap. And the only cool thing about these, and this, these are the same to me, is that uh, you know you don't see the bolt on the end. They look a little nicer, and you don't have to worry about the bolt coming out the top and scratching somebody or cutting somebody. Um, and the last one that you should know out of all these is this K lock or cap right here. And I have these as part of my robot kits as well. So if they say to use a kep bolt uh, or kep nut, you're going to use one of these. And uh, they work really good because they do grab onto the metal that you're twisting on and these do rotate and they do grab a little tighter than a normal one. Now, your assignment for the day is this. You guys ready for this? You're going to go to the here, and here's the website I went to if you want to look at it, but look at this. Click here. I did the first one for you. It says Hex External. So if you went to that website we were just at, right here. Hold on. Here's the different he types. So here's... Um, hold on. Wait. I think I'm in the wrong one. Let me scroll all the way down. What is I'm zoomed in too much. So this is getting really specific. Here we go. Screw head drives. This is what we're focusing on today. So a, a hex external is one that bolts on the outside of this. This also happens to be slotted, but they're talking about hex external. Okay. Hex internal right here. Phillips, the little plus sign one a posi drive, a quadrex, a slotted, which is also known as a flathead. It tells you that here, okay? A square recess or a square bit, a star, a torx. But look at the torx, look at that picture right there, and look at this. Do they look the same? They pretty much are. There is a very slight difference 
And um, the only difference is, is that Torx came up with a specific design star bit that's like, supposed to be better. So to be honest with you, if you have a star bit, it works as a Torx. A Torx works as a star bit, but technically they are slightly different, okay? But I, I, I combine them on our worksheet. Uh, I, I skipped this one. Uh, Tri-wing. Look at that. That's a really cool looking one, that tri-wing bit. And then there's tamper resistant ones, ones that are made so that people can't unscrew them like security bits. All right, so you've seen the pictures right here, right? You have to scroll down a ways to get to this part just to let you know it's under part D, I think. Yeah, screw head drive types. Here's the pictures, you guys see them? That's your assignment is to look at these if you want and go hex external. I need to find a screwdriver that fits this. So um, if you if you look here, I typed in hex external, I tried hex socket driver, I typed in different words until I found something that looks like it'll fit. Do you guys see this picture? I right clicked on it and I said copy picture and then I pasted it into the assignment right here. I had to make it smaller, it was really big when I pasted it and it was like that. So I just kind of, I just kind of clicked it and made it a little smaller. So what your job is is to look at the hex external, the name, and then find the screw bit that does it. Hex internal, Phillips, Posi drive. Now, I I never heard of Posi drive before. That was new to me. I actually looked it up. I said, what's the difference between Posi drive and Phillips? very small difference. There they are next to each other. They almost look like no difference. The only difference is is that there's like some diagonal stuff in the posi drive on this side. There's diagonal flat spots that fit these. And like I read online that you can use either one for either one, but they won't be perfect and they might slip on you. Okay? But there is a difference. One's posi drive, one's Phillips. You can see Phillips goes all the way up this diagonal cut. This one stops and has a flat part, and, that, and then you can see that flat part on the screws right here. All right. And then you have to do a quad, uh, quadrex. What the heck is a quadrex? If you go back here to, to, to our types, what is quadrex? Quadrex. Quadrex, it says, I was like, what's a Quadrix? That looks like a Phillips to me. And then I said, Quadrix drive, also known as a Phillips square drive. And then I had to look it up. So uh, not there, Quadrix right here. And then I realized, oh, it is a Phillips, but the tip is not pointy, it's flat. So you guys can see them. So this would, so you can submit a picture like this right here, or like this right here, or like this right here. So they do have flat tips. And that's your assignment. It's pretty much to find the screwdriver tip that fits the socket type. So if you want to go to the website, you can to help you look at them. And then that way you're sure that the screwdriver you're saying is matches it does. So here's a slot, for example. Um, let me go here to a square recess. And then you could type in something like, uh, s let me do a new one, square recess driver and go to images, and then see if you can find the best one that shows a good picture. Um, none of these look great, but here's one right here, and it's a square bit right here. It's, the tip is just square. It's hard to tell from this angle, so sometimes I try to find some that are angled, like so it's a better picture, but none of these seem to be that great. This one's sort of at an angle, but you can tell that the picture is square. That little tip is a square bit, so that will fit it. So that's it. That's your job for the day.